right, guys, we'll get to Shane Holtz, awesome 4320 in a minute. I am working on the Massey steering. And so I, I went through calibration, I got the monitor installed, zoom out, and uh, got everything plugged in, and we'll hit that line. Um, I've been playing with it here to see what, what a guy can do. Um, I notice I like the receiver is over my head right now and I did like it on the John Deere's when I had it out on the nose because there was less wander through the row but some of it is I just got to detail fine-tune my aggressive settings um, and and so right now it's it's really hunting all over so we can um, Let's take that aggressive down a little bit and then get try that again. And see, that might take some of that aggressive to hold on the line. And so what you might notice, if you're too aggressive, it'll go left to right to left to, and so you bring that aggressive down. But now, um, if you go too soft, it might get off to the left. See, now we're up to three inch errors where we didn't have that. So if we take that back to 15, it was at 10, so let's go the other direction and see how well that did. And uh, we'll let it, whoop. Oh, I gotta, I wasn't listening to the thing. We'll find a line, we'll let it pick up the line. And uh, normally you're not this far off of a line. Oops. And we'll see what it does. Yeah, see now it's way over aggressive. So now it shot, it overshot there pretty good, but now it's doing a really good job of trying to stay on that line better. Now it's just one inch. So, yeah. Boy, oh boy, there she's staying. There she's staying pretty darn good. So anyhow, let's get to Shane's tractor. Well, the system is, this year we get to turn the system on. We've been building this engine for several years, building the infrastructure around the cows and the crops and trying to get everything going. Um, this is our first year that we actually get to just use the system. Uh, we're still building and fine tuning and, you know, it never ends, but uh, all my herds are working for me. <clears throat> so you can see all the, the little worm cast mountain. And uh, we had, and uh, two inches of rain the other day, and we had an inch and a half. So in the last week and a half, we've had three and a half inches of rain. And the cows got their first first grazing today. They're on the other side of the 40 there. And uh, and so we got this going on. Um, so the big cows, the herd above ground has given us that fertility and then all their urine for the nitrogen and our herd below the ground that the alfalfa and the grass are supporting. They're doing their job. Um, look at the structure in the soil. There's a cow print. After three and a half inches of rain, it's soft. I can put my finger down into it, but it carried that cow. And uh, that's, that's the start of soil health. Um, if it was compacted feet, if it was compacted, I don't think I'd be poking my finger in it. Um, that's that resiliency that we're trying to build in the, in the soil. And, uh, I'm kind of excited. So this will be my third attempt at, um, strip till into the corn here. Um, or maybe second. I don't remember what I did. I think that was no till. Yeah. So this will be my second trial but this time we're going to be way more aggressive i know it sounds silly but we got to be aggressive with the chemical to knock the alfalfa back so then we can come back in with covers and so otherwise the alfalfa is just going to choke out everything we do again so they're going to graze for the month 
We got heat coming. We got a little green fuzz. Uh, this green fuzz is going to grow fast this week. So they can they can uh, uh, graze out here for the month of May. And uh, then at the end of the month, then we'll uh, kick them to their regular pasture. And that will give that pasture that month to, to grow up and get ahead of them as well. And then we'll strip till corn in here and we'll be very aggressive with covers because then this fall uh, after the other pastures then we'll come back and and then they can graze on this again so we'll have a lot of animal units a lot of grazing credits on this field plus hopefully a decent corn crop but even if we have dry weather and the corn fails again we'll have enough grazing credits that we'll make good money on this field because uh, if the corn fails to make grain, you know, if it's that severe drought, then uh, we still got the grasses and the covers and, and the corn to graze. And so, and if it's that much of a drought, there'll be that much more value to that, to that feed. But I better go. I'm going to check them. The Sexy 4320. What a great tractor. Kind of a 4020, uh, a 4020 front axle and rear end. Um with with 45 and 46 20 kind of power uh just a hot rod sweet tractor um so you just had a few little things i'm going to do a couple extra things because it's here and and since it's been here he's already um called for a few more items but um one thing if you got this lever on a 20 series tractor that means your pto is is right here that's the bearing that pushes against your fingers on the clutch. Look at how pretty that clutch is. Rebuilt. So they use the center of the existing clutch and they just put new pads on it. And uh, boy, that turns out nice. That turns out nice. But that's hydraulically activated. So these, these are the return springs. And uh, then that piece just comes out, you know, doom, doom, to turn the PTO on. Well, there's hydraulic packings in there. So we put them packings in. So you take that whole housing off and there's a couple packings that go around the pistons and there's a couple packings between that housing and then the input shaft seal. Um, new bearings come with, with the clutch. Um, we do a rear main seal anytime we split a tractor for the most part. Um, I know some guys get mad at us for that, but we're here and we do it. Um, so that's done. Uh, got the shift lever fixed up already. Um, there was just some roll pins in there. So that lever rocks. So I got the 8430. I got that front axle back on and back together and got him drove outside. I haven't cleaned up that mess yet. The 4440 got the new seat, new interior. Uh, got his lights working, got his warning lights working, got the roof light on. Uh, the two-speed and the clutch, we rebuilt that. That's working good. We got another steering valve to do for a guy. Got the rear window in. Still got to figure out his radio and speakers. Um, so we finally, that one's got his three-point working. Uh, so that one's kind of on the tail end. Um, but I got a, got a solenoid for his electric shutoff here. Um, he had a water leak right here, so we just put these O-rings in this cap. When I get it cleaned up and then uh, we see all this scale and rust and that's pretty common you know it's a 50 year old piece of cast iron swimming with water inside it you're gonna get rust and so I picked up some cleaner so we'll get it good and hot and hopefully cook that out and uh, yeah the roll pins up here so there's just a um, right here's your a block right down in there and so when you are that side to side movement it's just rocking on a couple roll pins well when they break then you when you go to shift the lever this whole lever flops around you know well that's no fun um so i got that redone already uh i'll do the transmission filter because we're here and it's low on transmission oil and uh so if i'm going to refill the transmission oil i'll do it on a clean filter and uh, nobody ever got hurt on the side of safety, you know, kind of deal. Um, and then these couplers back here, these barrel kits, it's just a simple O-ring kit on these barrels. If you can move the SCV like that, it's time for a barrel kit. And so that did a couple hours and you're doing, 
wham bam right there and then we'll have them back together so by the end of the week I'd like to see a lot of progress on this guy. I, I can't bring in another tractor till these two are gone. And dad's, <sighs> dad's 40, the one, the fourth, uh, the 4020 he's working on. Uh, he's just got to button that one up. The 3020 is basically done. Uh, literally just have a few minutes of some sheet metal and screens. And that one's done. And then all four tractors, we can go out at the same time. And then we're gonna steam clean. <laughs> we're just gonna steam clean this whole, the whole shop here and uh, just give it a good bath. And then uh, huh, we've already got the next uh, tractors outside to come in. And so, yeah, we got the case, we got a binder and we've got a 4020 and um, the 4230. So we'll just, by, by dumb luck, everything's kind of getting done around the same time frame. So dad's like, you know what? Let's not bring anything out. Let's just get these four out, do a big clean, and uh, and then bring the next four back in. And so, yeah. No, what a, what a fun tractor. What a gorgeous tractor. And I like, you know, there's something about this 404. <clears throat> you know, you're obviously a smaller engine than the 466, but... It just has a better a better straight pipe turbo sound. Um, it's got just a nice little more. It actually sounds meatier. But all right, guys, thanks for watching.